Prisma version 6.12 is here and there are some cool new things to talk about in Prisma ORM. So let's take a look at those by getting started in this project doing npx prisma init. And the first thing to talk about is the client generator. In our schema.prisma file, if we take a look in here, right up at the top, we've got this generator block. We've got a provider which points to Prisma client.js. Now this is what we always get when we do a Prisma init, but there is another option. If you've been following along lately, you have seen this, that we have Prisma client. This is a different generator than the typical Prisma client-js generator. And so what's this all about? Well, this is an ESM compatible client generator. It's overall more flexible. And it solves a lot of the pain points that people would experience when this default generator, Prisma Client JS, would automatically put all of the generated assets into the node modules directory if we don't have an output path. So you've probably seen this. If you generate your clients, there will be some new code that goes into node modules, which can cause issues in different scenarios. It's actually worthwhile to compare what we get as output for these two different types of generators. So let's do this. Let's keep this output path that we've got here. Let's just give ourselves a single model to use. I like to start with a user model as usual. So we've got model user. We have got a few fields on this user model. I'm gonna get rid of post. Let's just keep things simple. All right, so that is saved. Now down here, let's do npx prisma generate. Now up here, we have got this generated directory and we've got a bunch of files here. We've got these JS files, we've got these d.ts files, and there's a lot going on within this directory. So keep this mental image here of what we have in this fashion. Now let's get rid of this directory. Let's start again by using the new generator. So we'll lob off the dash JS bit here and let's just run this again, just as we did. npx prisma generate. So now in the generated directory, we've got a lot less going on. We've got client.ts, we've got models.ts, enums, we've got just basically TypeScript files now. And the idea here is that this shouldn't live in node modules. Node modules ultimately in the current day isn't a good place to be putting the assets that get generated by Prisma. They should instead live with your app code so that when things change in your model and you regenerate, there aren't issues targeting those files inside of node modules and getting things to rebuild properly. As it stands, when we initialize Prisma, like we saw, we get dash JS like this immediately. But Prisma client, this generator here, the difference at 6.12 is it has moved from early access into preview. So things are much more stable. The surface area for the API will largely remain the same going forward. Bugs have been worked out. And in fact, at version seven of Prisma upcoming, this will be the default that we get when we initialize. And we will have to provide an output path like this. So no more going to node modules for our assets for Prisma client. So if you have not already checked out the Prisma client generator like this, go ahead and do so. Let us know if you have any feedback in your usage of it. Generally, things should work out very well for you in your projects. Now, if we're using this generator here, Prisma Client, there are some other options that we can pass into this client block. For example, runtime. We might want to target Node.js like this, but we also might want to target Dino. Or maybe the runtime we're using is Bun. So we've got options there to target a specific runtime. Then we can also specify the module format, for example, and that can be set to ESM, or we could set it to CommonJS. And then there's a couple other options here, generated file extension and import file extension pointing to TS. We could override that if we wanted to. So again, what's new at 6.12 is this is now a preview feature and much more stable, ready for you to use. All right, so let's take a look at something else new at 6.12, and that is some additional capability in the Prisma config file. So you may have seen this, we're getting closer and closer to general availability for it. You can go ahead if you want to and create a prisma.config.ts file, and that's going to live at the root of your project, and this is where we can pass some configuration. So why don't we even see from the ground up here how this works? What we need to do here is export this default function called define config, so export default, and then define config is what we want, define config. Now that's gotta come from somewhere and that comes from Prisma. So let's import define config. Let's take these auto-generated bits out here. What we need to do is say early access true, that's the first thing. And then what we can say is we can give a location as to where our schema is. So we can give a path, a direct path to the schema and that's going to be prisma slash schema.prisma, just the standard way that we would access it. Now what's new here at 6.12 is we can say where the migrations should go. So where the migration files should live for our project. 
And we can pass a path and then maybe go to a folder called DB and then into migrations, for example. And we can also do the same thing with views. So if we're using views in our project, we can tell Prisma where to put them. Now, something to note here when we're using the Prisma config file is that we have to bring our own way of exposing environment variables. Meaning that if we have an environment file and we point to a database URL, if we're not using the Prisma config, Prisma is just going to make an assumption about where this environment file is and be able to reach for these variables. But that isn't true if we're using the config file. So what we can do is use something like .env. If we do npm install .env, and then come into our config file and up at the top, we can import it. So import.env slash config. Now Prisma is going to have access to our environment file and be able to reach for the database URL, for example. All right, why don't we see that this works? Let's start up the local Prisma Postgres database we've got, mpx Prisma dev to do that. Looks like the database is running then in a new terminal window. Let's do our first migration and we'll make sure that we end up with our migrations in this path here, slash db slash migrations. So npx prisma migrate dev name is init. All right, so up top here, we've got db and we have got migrations in there. Normally, if we don't give a custom path, we are going to have our migrations live in the Prisma directory. And that might be what you want, but you might also want to put them in a different location within your project. And now with these new options at version 6.12, we have the ability to say where that should be. So that's all to look at today for Prisma 6.12. If you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. You can reach us on the web at prisma.io. We're on x slash Twitter at Prisma there. Or if you want to join the discussion on Discord, we'll leave a link to that in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more updates as new versions of Prisma roll out, we would love if you'd hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.